Welcome back to Night Mind, friends. I hope you've been staying cool during this particularly hot summer. But if you're in need of a chill to keep the temperature down, you've come to the right place. July is the birthday month of the channel, and in observation of seven years of Night Mind, I thought I'd take us on a classic style trip. A vlog format mystery adventure, lots of old technology, tension and horror, and so long and involved that it's going to require more than one part to explore it all. That's right, we're kicking off a series, or at the very least, a two-parter. It's been too long since I've made something that needed its own playlist, right? Now, I know as we get into it, some of you are going to start feeling inspired, creative, hungry to dive into your own dark imagination, and maybe pick up a camera to film something delightfully freaky. That's why I'm happy to announce that our friends at Skillshare are sponsoring us tonight to kick off the journey. We experience a wide world of media expression in the field of unfiction, and whatever way you want to join in, Skillshare is ready to assist, providing all sorts of classes to match your goals and interests. As we all know, live-action vlog-style work typically involves running around with a camera, and DSLR video production with Phil Ebner can help you start shooting better video today. But what if the only camera you have is in your phone? Asaf Shurnets has you covered with his course, Mobile Video, how to create great videos with your mobile phone. What if you'd like to do something more website-based? There are coding classes for that if you want to go in-depth, but for those who want to compose quickly with a WebKit, you have classes like Website Design and WordPress for Beginners. Learn to build a website in one hour with Will Bartlett. And that's just an example of a few classes that could lead you to your first creative venture. With Skillshare, you can mix and match anything you learn or want to discover and produce whatever meets your vision. And even if making an internet project isn't on your mind, they've got classes for anything from hobbies to game development to self-help, with resources like Meditation 101, Spark Joy, Peace and Creativity in Your Daily Life, The Ultimate Self-Care Playbook by Jonathan Van Ness, Plants at Home by Plant Queen, and Writing for Self-Discovery. And hey, do you want to learn some magic? Try Tim Domsky's Sleight of Hand Magic class. Skillshare is ad-free, premium classes are launched every week, and the entire catalog is available with subtitles in Spanish, French, Portuguese, and German. The first 1,000 people to use the link in the video description or my code Nightmind will get a one-month free trial of Skillshare. That's the whole Skillshare library, completely free for one month. Again, just use the link in the video description or my code Nightmind to get Skillshare completely free for one month. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring tonight's exploration and providing viewers with this awesome opportunity. Now, for tonight's journey, we once again turn to the new frontier of video horror, where the stories available have grown quite a lot in number recently. TikTok. As of this moment of recording, the account known as Tentape stands at 231,000 followers, with an all-time high view count of 5.7 million on the first video. A staggering audience not only for a TikTok narrative, but a work of horror. And while you could very well watch along through TikTok for your own guided experience, a chronological playlist is available on YouTube, which may be easier for viewing. As always, I highly encourage watching the content before proceeding with my video, and I provided a link to the playlist in the description below. Once you're all set, proceed with me here, and I can show you everything involved in the journey that couldn't be captured on tape. All set? Let us begin. On May 21st, 2021, the account originally titled At Ham City and R2 uploaded a TikTok about moving into a new apartment. While taking videos to show his family, the user noticed something odd. A piece of paper with strips attached to the back of a street sign outside the window. The user retrieved the paper and on examination found it largely unreadable outside the coordinates on the strips. The coordinates led to a spot nearby and of course, the user prepares to go investigate. He makes jokes in the next upload, playing along with the audience members who had already appeared, saying it's a beautiful day to not get murdered. It's unclear at first where he's supposed to be looking, and a few false starts bring about some disappointment. Eventually, he comes across what looks like a box sitting on a pipe. In part 3, he reveals what he's found. A VHS tape. He pulls off the cover and sees a mark on the plastic. The number one. At home, the user points out how the writing matches that on the note. It must be the same author. Now, of course, the next step is clear. But before we get to that, let's examine our opening. The setup for the 10 tape story is so simple, yet so excellently done. 
Its performance fits in perfectly with the nature of TikTok videos detailing discoveries that interrupt the flow of everyday life, often leading to multiple parts unspooling the entire thread of events and giving updates to the audience. Quite simply, we believe it. The establishment is in line with famous TikTok stories like the discovery of an abandoned apartment hidden behind a bathroom wall, and the woman who met a man in a dream whose mysterious language was really the title of a book of poems that had been out of print. TikTok has largely been doing for the average person what characters and web series needed some suspension of disbelief to do on YouTube, showing off something odd to the masses, simply for the sake of not being alone in the act of discovery. What used to be a chore to do, and therefore harder to believe as a setup, is now an action as simple as sending a text, and quite common. We've already been shown more shocking events than this on TikTok, so it's no wonder how the original video gained millions of views. In part 4, the user mentions how some audience members gave the opinion that the note was for geocaching, and that certainly is a possibility. As for the tape, he's been looking online for a cheap way to buy a VCR, and he'll be picking one up the next day. That does occur, thankfully, and it comes with all the components needed. He declares that he'll be broadcasting the playthrough of the tape live due to popular demand. So far, so good. The setup feels natural, especially for its platform. The character is acting normally, and we're getting to business rather swiftly. This is where things can change or increase. So, let's see it. What's on the tape? Okay, I feel like I should like... I feel like I, I uh, if... Whatever is gonna come up, whatever is, <laughs> I don't know, uh, whatever happens, I feel like I should say something along the lines of, I don't know if I can make sure that the responsibility isn't on me here, <laughs> but I feel, but I mean, I am the one broadcasting it, I guess, but okay, if this happens, like if my hand goes down or some shit, uh, yes, yeah, okay. I'm gonna play it again. A lot of you are saying Morse code. Like if it's actually yeah okay right standard arg video drop though we have to give points to its creator for not showing themselves in a black and white mask first thoughts the video's purpose primarily seems to be showing locations and providing a message via morse code as the live audience pointed out the figures shown as an overlay aren't immediately placeable and we can spot a few of them potentially the same man at different ages this is absolutely a game piece this tape is meant to be studied, pulled apart, and solved, unlike some other mystery VHS tapes we've come across in our examination of stories. The audience that had accumulated at this point gathered in community spaces and the comments to provide answers. 
It was indeed Morse code, spelling out the phrase, Noble Aceton, which lines up with the identity of the figure, Alfred Nobel, of the Nobel Peace Prize. Acetin is any of three liquid acetates formed when glycerol and acetic acid are heated together. It can have a few uses, but one of them is for treatment of acetaminophen overdoses. It's a very odd video to leave as a drop, but as the opening act to an ARG, it makes complete sense. In the scenario we're studying now, it's very possible that the user behind 10 tapes has merely stumbled into a game. If you wanted to conduct one organically, this would be a method to do so. However, it seems this is a bit more personal than a random chance game. In the following update, the user informs his audience that a participant named Corey Wong Tu sent him a rearranged version of the note on the back of the sign outside the apartment, and discovered what seemed to be a floor plan. Sure enough, that is a floor plan, and as you can see from the user's commentary, it's his apartment. This doesn't appear to be a random game. The letters are curious. A-C-H-M-M-W-Y. No doubt we'll find a breakthrough in some form concerning what these mean later. In the next upload, the user comes back from a trip to the store to find a bag hanging on his door handle. Let Some Air Inside is written in the same style as the floor plan note and the marking on the first tape. This is almost certainly the Game Master. As for the clue Let Some Air Inside, it's solved soon enough. Those of you who have spent enough time visiting my office will know what that sound was. A spectrogram, which is an image translated into audio, revealed through a program's visualizer for frequencies. The result, 2TFMBTX, was the missing element for a bit.ly link. The community following at this time went to work on the image left at the link, resulting in these findings. Alphanumeric code for terms such as fake implies the intent of fooling, and ARG. Base 85 was used for the middle section, that's a base encryption choice we haven't quite seen before, and breaks down to, you are part of this, you have impact, interact, understand. Finally, first letter code, he needs your help. 
so it's definitely an ARG the user's been sucked into, though the ultra-personal nature of it taking place around his apartment is a bit too close for enjoyment factor. Previous tenants of residences enjoy leaving small signs of their history for the next person, not active, clue-dropping games. The user certainly feels the same about this, stating in his next upload, I had to get out of the apartment today. He's begun taking frequent videos of himself, as he feels he's being watched. Once it stops raining though, he will look into the clues regarding Alfred Nobel. But first, he provides a recap for anybody new discovering his videos. It's helpful even to us, revealing a few things. There may have been someone watching him through the window in one of his initial sit-downs. The bit.ly link provided the image we've seen through a video. Some of the codes in it may not be broken, and the word acetin was found through the letters on the first note. It's also found in explosives, and Alfred Nobel invented dynamites. Part 14 is uploaded next, in which the user reports he felt someone was at his door last night. He couldn't check because the peephole is broken. This morning, another cassette was found amongst his mail, and he plans to go live with the initial playthrough. Uh, so, quick recap, this tape came this morning in my mailbox. Uh, I listened to it beforehand this time. Uh, those of you who had fun with the last one uh, are probably going to have fun with this one as well. I don't even know really where to begin with it, but it's it's something. Okay, here we go. Just having my finger on the volume here. One blank W blank nine blank zero zero zero. The message was clear, albeit coded, and certainly a lot of rewinding and writing for those following along who wanted to assist in code breaking. But as always, the dedicated work quickly, and a solution was found. One down, nine to go. Confused by now, but soon you'll know. Watching these events unfold, to a defaced crowd the story is told. And by studying the blanks, a final message. Nitro tube. Those who refer to the original scrap of paper realize the letters left over after the floor plan was cut out spelled out Nitro Tube 2. The user uploads informing us that he changed out the broken peephole, replacing it with a small camera screen. He's also been trying to figure out the meaning of the symbol on the second cassette tape, and he's about to investigate the Alfred Nobel clues, asking a friend to join him. He also alludes to making one more purchase before embarking on the physical investigation, and by this time, has given himself a moniker for the followers to refer to him. H. Any footage of the ground hunt for clues that was anticipated is preceded by startling development. Mystery videos uploaded to H's TikTok account. There were a bundle of clues inside these two videos, and as you expect, the community devoured them within hours of upload. Spoken letters at the beginning of the first were run through an affine cipher, coming out to Do You Feel Blame? Next up, another first time code for us. A nihilist cipher, in which the key was Lucia, hinted at by the phrase The Sicilian. The Sicilian, St. Lucia, has her own celebration in Sweden called Lucia Day, observed on December 13th. The cipher text listed out the ten tapes mentioned before, with the verse labeled as being made to engage, and the second to awake. Background music was the song, Look at Your Game, Girl, by Charles Manson. The second video had the song, Wicked World, by Black Sabbath played in reverse in Sounds of Coughing. Several piano notes were played, but nothing was done with them at the time. H returns after a period of silence, reporting that he slept for almost 20 hours. Obviously, he didn't upload the last two videos. He has footage of his investigation and is currently reviewing it. 
As for that last purchase he needed to make before going out, it was a chess-mounted camera. The Alfred Nobel clues led H to some blasting bunkers nearby at the site of Alfred Nobel's research lab and factory, and his friend did accompany him. There was a thorough search, but nothing was discovered. That night, disappointed and confused, H returned to the apartment to find a note on his door with a code. He used it at the desktop, then reported he knew he had missed something and had it out again. The code was for another bit.ly link, showing off the symbol from the second cassette tape behind bars and a series of numbers. H took this as a sign of where specifically to look at the blasting bunkers, a large barred gate. H now owned the second VHS tape, the one to awaken. He renamed his account 10 Tapes to reflect the journey he'd begun, and set up another live broadcast to experience the latest discovery. That's fucking me. I swear to God, that's me. That's me. That's my phone. That's the tripod the phone is on right now. That's me. Yep, that's me. Wait. I'm pretty sure I know when this is. I think you saw when I st was standing there with the. That was the glove on the. St yep. Yeah. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. You see it when I'm holding? That's this. Yeah, look. That's this. So this is the true test of development in the project we're witnessing. Admittedly, for those who have known a few unfiction series during the heyday of Marble Hornets, the approach taken here is very familiar. There's a taunting stalker playing Game Master, using slowed down and reverse music, creepy editing, lots of codes, showing the central character footage of themselves. There's nothing new in this, except for the platform the story is taking place on and the fact that, truly, we don't know what this mystery figure wants. The other aspect of what's new seems to be the angle. The main character, H, really does appear to be caught up in an ARG, which is an approach that we haven't actually seen before. I can't think of a story off the top of my head in which the central character is simply somebody in our own position, going through a game experience designed around them. In this way, we can see the elements of the tapes and their obvious inspirations in a new light. This is the game. These are the tropes. Of course, it's nothing new. But our position in the story is, and because of this new position, we can't exactly study or critique the presentation of the Game Master's work the way we would in another project. Yes, I'll say it, the Game Master here is frankly uninspired, tropey, and using a plethora of codes to hint at vague themes and concepts that almost make the code cracking not worth doing. Yet the distance we have now produces a different way of viewing it and feeling it. And I'll add this into the mix. Hanging out with H exploring this, even while he seems to be in danger, is strangely cozy. It's nostalgic, actually, and I love that. There was a video just before this, a recap video we didn't really need for ourselves right here, in which H sat down with his tea and went over the latest happenings, and it produced an interesting feeling. Contentment. Quite often for me, watching through one of these projects, exploring them, produces familiarity and comfort. A contentment that I always enjoy and recognize is something only the good projects can really generate. A certain kind of comfort. That's the way I can describe it. 
As for the story, this is the point of no return in terms of quality. Without significant development in the narrative and information being gained in the next few codes and movements by the Game Master that promise greater rewards, we may see the direction start to falter. As cozy as this is, it's still very fallible. But we must continue in order to gauge that, and the first order of business is to see what this video actually says. There were quite a few codes here. I know you must have spotted the infamous binary code messages. That translates to, finish what you started. There are messages in ROT cipher, bacon code, a tap cipher, and a bible reference. He really threw in the kitchen sink for this one. You felt so tired. So, so tired. They are clever. Are you? Proverbs 2013 Do not love sleep or you will grow poor. Stay awake and you will have food to spare. Color by numbers. And do you feel safe? Finish what you started seems redundant considering H is in this for the long haul. The rest is actually worth consideration. Usually, characters in his predicament suffer lack of sleep, not an abundance of it. But this is a point of ridicule for the Game Master, and suggests there might be reason to suspect involvement. What immediately comes to mind is that this person knows the apartment, has been there in off hours, and is watching the account. H is a habitual tea drinker. He has shown us this on camera. Is it possible his apartment has been broken into and his tea's been replaced or laced with something to induce extended periods of sleep? He's either living with a pre-existing condition, being poisoned, or is suffering paranormal effects. That's just how this usually goes. Make your guess now, and I suppose we'll see what happens. On to the next video, part number 28. H reports that things have been quiet for a moment, and demonstrates what the audience would be looking at most of the time if he did provide daily updates as they're asking. Just a lot of daily life. He has caught something interesting though. A silver QR code on a sign on his path to work. He attempted to scan it, but to no effect, and leaves investigating to the audience. They made short work of the code, getting the link out of it, which produced a streamable video containing a series of images. The title of the video led to yet another link, a website titled Peel No Elephant, presenting this image and a password field. The solution was to convert the hex codes for the colors into ASCII, granting the password Shivery, and rewarding players with another video that reportedly contained rotating arrows with numbers. The next uploads from H cover this puzzle-cracking work for those not involved. Then he takes his scooter for a ride, following the code clue, color by numbers. The next update is a direct follow-up to the previous. H came home to an email, sent when he was at the tower. It was an image of the tower and a message. You know how. June 12th. Followed by shots of H at the location. On June 12th, H provides an update. The last few days have been quiet, and his Discord community has been putting together color combination possibilities for the tower. Meanwhile, one participant following along, Hannah the Horrible on YouTube, received an email from the Game Master, going by the moniker Peel No Elephant, one of the puzzle solutions. It contained a video that, as you expect, had a long mess of code. The community got to work, and it was found to be coded in Nihilus Cipher. If you think I am without eyes, if you believe I do not possess ears, you are blind, deaf, mute. A few people laughed, a few people cried, most people were silent, defaced and he pursued. If you think there is nothing at stake, it is your hands that will be stained. At your safe harbor, holding your surface of digital disturbance, constituting the sole separator between the front lines and uniting with the 38 in March 13th of 1964. There are no coincidences, only the illusion of them. He shall live. Cryptic as always. At least we have a date and some clues. March 13th, 1964. Turkey threatened Cyprus with an attack, and a woman named Catherine Kitty Genovese was assaulted and stabbed to death in Queens, with almost 40 witnesses, but no rescuers. 
uniting with the 38s. Close enough to 40 to entertain a possibility of connection, though it's unlikely. It's pretty clear there's a message here about the separation between audience and participants, with digital interfaces acting as a wall, a safe harbor. There's a sense of someone being wronged here, that's certain. Let's see if we can find more context later. Back on H's side of things, the trip to the tower takes place, and as far as puzzle efforts go involving a community, this is, by far, one of the coolest methods of interaction I've ever seen used in a project, and certainly one of the most involved puzzle-wise. Color patterns needed to be punched into the tower using the app, and the arrows in one of the puzzle videos were used to determine colors. According to the Discord community record, the rotational arrow was either all the way on or all the way off for each color of red, blue, green. We had four main patterns and then kept on expanding on those ideas to prepare for Tower Day. H also experienced audience visitors during the live broadcast, a unique addition to an ARG event. By the end of an hour, the tower had been lit in accordance with the pattern solution offered by followers, and one of H's companions informed him on the spot that the website under the name Peel No Elephant had just uploaded a new video, depicting a laundry room that H recognized. He went to investigate the new location and discovered a safe with two notes. Four tries, no more, no less, and a clue. Upon returning to the apartment, H found another clue hanging from the door after hearing somebody in the hallway. Once again, there's no way forward except through puzzle solving, and an additional clue was offered through Peel No Elephant, an audio clip of a train and a statement. The tower tells me, one follows time, none goes against it. Above all is none, below all is none. Outside, H finds another note has been left on the street sign where it all began. Back of the apartment, H removes the USB drive and the image on the left of the case. A close-up reveals the children's faces have been scraped away. Turning it over informs us it's a postcard, with a note. The poem won't give digits. Yet. The USB drive's casing is wrapped in a material like burlap or bandaging, and marked with a number 4. First glance on the computer prompts a request for a password to access the material. So what do you do at this point? Turn to the audience, of course, who had already been pushed to act. Several people received an email from the Game Master with a streamable link, granting a video with this image, rotating ones and zeros, and the poem from earlier about the tower. 
The poem's clues were used to come up with a binary sequence, and followers noticed that letters in the second sign note match one of the patterns for the tower color code. Altogether, the community put together the password from these elements. Report to me. A GIF was contained in the file, coming out to this image. Seven of elephants key, and four the tower told. Remove my memory, first quarter will unfold. Peel no elephant updated next, providing a password field and an image of the clue from the safe. The solution was found through retreads of previous clues guided by this message, coming out to 33. That input produced a new page. Pick up your prize, and a photo of a new location. H uploaded a video of his journey there, the spot quickly figured out with the help of the community. H has the third tape, and before playing it provides a recap. I'd like to play just one segment in order to highlight an aspect of the 10 tapes ARG that we should touch upon early. This is H's explanation of everything involved in the last stage of code work to get tape 3. Upon closer inspection the USB had a password protected file on it. Now someone realized that if we take the colors from the background of the letters on the note that said imposter, and we rearrange them into the order of the colors on the tower, I think I'm kinda lost at this part, it spells out report to me. Report to me turned out to be the password for USB, and upon entering this password, it gave us a jumbled pictures and a new password field that appeared on PE. Now, remember the weird audio with the tower tells me thing? Someone figured out that one follows time, it means that a clockwise rotation equals a number one, and none goes against it means that a counterclockwise rotation means zero. This gave us a bunch of numbers that couldn't be translated into anything, but then it says above all is none and below all is none, which prompted them to add a zero at the beginning and the end of the whole thing. And that could be translated from binary to text, and it said, Tent. I know this is a lot, but we're almost done. The scrambled image on the USB drive read, Seven of elephants key and four of the tower told. Remove my memory, first quarter will unfold. This is absolutely insane to me, but in like 30 minutes someone in the Discord had figured out that seven of elephants key is referring to the seven-letter word shivery, and the four of the tower told is the four-letter word tent. These two words, when combined, forms an anagram for the word 37. Next line is remove my memory, which if you remember the USB stick had a four on it, 37 minus four is 33. When entering 33 into the password field on PE, this image changed into this image, confirming that the first two numbers to the safe code is 33. It also gave us this picture, which we very fast figure out where it was. I went there, climbed like a little mountain, found a couple of notes, and got a tape dropped in my backpack when I had my back turned. And so finally, this is where we're at. Why did we need to go over this? Quite simply, because this ARG's code work runs deeper than a lot of others. Really deeper. This can get complicated and convoluted, and for narrative purposes and project study purposes, it simply won't do us well to examine literally every step and process of the code work. Going forward, we must concentrate more on the what and the why of 10 tapes, rather than the how of its puzzle-solving minutia. It should go without saying, however, that enormous credit must be given to the creator, Jeff, and the community's dedicated solution-scouring members. This is a very complicated game to design, and quite difficult to solve. Without the labors of the community members, this experience could not have gone forward, and this video also would not be possible. Special thanks goes to the record keepers, whose extensive work timelining and note-taking makes it possible to deliver a Nightmind video on experiences like these. 
Those who keep timelines are the heroes of preserving ARGs after the final life portion airs, and we should all be grateful to them. Now, let's get to what we really want. Tape 3. So, solutions time? Of course. H picked up two messages along with tape three. The first was a bacon cipher reading, Dullards. The second was Nihilist reading, How smart you are, congratulations. Considering the video prominently featured the word Dullards, that seems pretty unnecessary. Bacon cipher and use of the tower went into the codes for the video, as well as webdings. Yeah, really, webdings. The final yield for puzzle work on this one reads, Pleasure making your acquaintance. Great job, let me hang your progress right here on the fridge. The next update is significant for the turn of storytelling. A video on H's TikTok, not taken by him, indicating that followers could find Peel No Elephant. This led to the discovery of their own accounts on TikTok and YouTube, now telling the story on new fronts. And it's exactly what you expect. <laughs> You know, I'm starting to think some of these ARG guys are weirder than I am. As for the contents of these videos, there's only one thing of true substance which I can summarize. Peel No Elephant suffered the same fate as just about every game master playing spooky mystery man who ever lived. There were game jackers, imposters pretending to be part of the ARG, leading people astray, impersonating Peel No Elephant. He's upset about it and upset that people bought it when he's made his signatures clear, so it's time for the audience to wise up and follow the genuine article. There's something to be said here for the humor of the particular situation, all things considered, Mr. Black, White, and Binary Code. But it's summer, not spring, so I'm afraid I need to temper my current level of snark. H comes to us next with a video taken at night in his apartment. He's hearing noises, and while the peephole screen shows nothing, he feels the need to look around outside. No one seems to be around, but when he returns, there's a drop on the sign outside the apartment. A short video from PNE marks the next two slots on the safe, and the binary code on the base of the monkey breaks down to 43. So far, that's four numbers down. 3343. Three, three. H uploads a video shortly detailing the note he received, though he needed to follow instructions by redacting information meant only for him. He's been instructed to take a bus to a location and bring a computer, where he'll use a code he's been provided. 
Viewers notice that some letters in the note are specially marked, spelling out, See no evil, be blind. H updates viewers on his journey to the location at the time and date specified by the Game Master, who by now had earned the moniker X. He soon arrives and begins following instructions. To everybody's surprise, the livestream that followed ended up playing on PNE's YouTube channel. H provided the recording along with the chat in a finalized video here. Even though they were frightened for a bit, the chat seemed to have some fun being kidnapped, and the implementation of live streaming in this way is enjoyable and does make us wonder what exactly is going to happen. The note behind the monkey, depicting hear no evil, says, Please stop, and the repeating coded phrase is, I'm so sorry. Messages on the note all point to acting deaf for the next phase of H's trial. As we find out shortly, this will be a difficult task. H has survived the night, and now finds himself strung along, literally, on a new trail. Also, X the Game Master took the chance to break his peephole, which is very nice, that must have been really expensive. H follows the trail outside, finding X marks the spot, and continues to pick up messages. Over, and over, and over. Too many messages. It's clear by now that X thinks he's the second coming of the Zodiac. And all this time, of course, he's been stalking H in his easter egg hunt, because a final gift was left waiting for him on the handle to the apartment.
There's a bit of tongue-in-cheek fun in the act of stringing H along, isn't there? But now, of course, we need the translations. In the order of appearance, the messages read, It's not too late. Well done. Curious how listen contains the same letters as silent, isn't it? You can still. Now call up Dr. Dull, salvage your time just to confirm if their lilies have died. And this, please stop. Pack my box with five dozen liquor jugs. How quickly daft jumping zebras vex. For as you lay your trust so gently in their hands, I shall have them act out the next part of the plan. Nothing is done with the monkey's record in this time, but a follow-up video by H addressing concerns about his mysteriously rotating office chair the night of the break-in ends with a shot of a message on a record case. This is 72. Online searches for This is 72 turned up a SoundCloud page with two songs, all lined up, and here it is. One of them contained a spectrogram, which had a YouTube video URL. The twist? It led to a video from H. The song all lined up was a clue to how to use this, lining up letters in the video at points to produce a help request form. Members of the community who filled it out soon received emails from H, confirming what they suspected. The note attached to the monkey's record instructed H to play Game Master himself for a moment, under the final trial, Speak No Evil. As such, a player named Tommy was elected to hold a live stream, and X uploaded a TikTok video with the coordinates for it. The stream goes on as planned, and X uses TikTok clues and live chat appearances to guide Tommy and their companion, Thea. The drop is located at the benches, a photo with a message. It read, Hansel, Gretel, Today we speak openly, no smoke or mirrors. There are multiple players, but there will be no winners. Theatrics and deception be put to rest. You'll wander today with water on your left. As aforementioned, pond on your left-hand side until I say otherwise. Just comply when it's time. I'll know if you deny. Be wary of surroundings as you walk in my steps, for things may contain meaning, though not meant to perplex. As promised, I've stepped down. It won't be too complex. Now before we begin with the evening's first clue, remember one thing. I can see you. A man is cast away. He scribbles frenetically his pleas for help, his message in a bottle. Before throwing it, though, he secures it to the dock, for he is stranded on the mainland, alone with everyone else. The duo of investigators walk towards the water, and in the chat, X tells them when they've arrived. This time, it's an actual dock they're looking around on, and another bottle is found, containing rocks, plastic, rope, and messages. Six were my children, in a line they were swinging. Behind them, entrance. There's a drawing of a fork in a road, with one arrow and a warning to not go trailing off. Another image is shown, blurry, with a writing, and through it they crawl to gather round the fire. I am closer now. One final note from X in the chat. Water on your left. Keep moving. The next message is found behind a swing set. Hansel and Gretel got back on their trail with the ocean on their left-hand side. They kept walking until they saw sand, where ocean meets land. They took a firm left but then came to a halt. They felt a sudden urge to read, a sudden urge to call. I would give you my word that there's nothing to fear, but why promise such things when you know I am near? Thanks for stopping by. Feel free to look around, but there is nothing here that you haven't yet found. X provided a riddle to the chat next. Or was it device? When famine struck, you were mere children left to your own demise. They stopped to read. Thea and Tommy spotted signs hung up near the beach, one that seemed to call out to them. Feeling indecisive? A bird whooshed up into the air and in its beak was a large crumb. Hansel and Gretel were struck with grief. The birds must have taken all their breadcrumbs. A wolf howled in the distance. The sun was setting. Hansel and Gretel were lost and hungry. Now they were scared, too. We know to walk past the beach, said Gretel. But what if we're presented with a decision we don't know the answer to, continued Hansel. What do we do then? A phone number was left for them, and to their great surprise, it went to a voicemail. Hi, unfortunately I cannot get to the phone right now, but either try calling again later, or try to contact me through my website. That's idb.co slash capital Y 32 D capital T capital K 5. Again, that's idb.co capital Y 32 D T K 5. Thank you. That was H's voicemail, and he left a web address. It produced the page that read, when presented with a choice of paved road under their feet or the old wood of a bridge, they took the bridge. They stopped in the middle, hands on the railing, and enjoy the view. So of course, a note was found on the bridge railing. 
They crossed the bridge. Upon reaching the end, they walked 15 meters right and admired their surroundings. They were beginning to feel blue. That led the duo to a blue container telling them to dig. They found the final monkey and a note with a code. The code is not for you. Remove the tape and he suffers the consequences. The choice is yours. Now, finish what you started. A location was given here as well, one that H had visited before nearby. On arrival, X instructed the duo to look for blue under the area they were inspecting and found the lid of the container from before. Underneath it read, Wouldn't that be convenient? Go where he went. So X does enjoy a bit of screwing around with followers. At last they came to the end of the road, where the instructions were surprising. Your journey ends here. Leave what doesn't belong to you. Bid the dullards farewell and walk away. Cut contact. Don't look back. H uploads a recap video next, describing how he went to pick up the monkey and notes from the duo, and now he's ready to reveal what was left solely for him. The box from the live stream. And so in here is the third monkey. The live will be taking place on YouTube this time because TikTok doesn't allow for me to save it and everyone's always asking, well, is there going to be a recap or a way for me to watch it if I miss it? And I always have to go, well, th there isn't really one, but I'll, I'll edit one and those are always shorter or whatever. So yeah, I'm going to do it on YouTube this time. Link is in the bio and here I am getting the tape off and... Uh, lo and behold, uh, there are binary numbers on it. So here is the last piece of the puzzle for the safe. Uh, it's gonna take all the willpower I have in me to not uh, enter this into the safe right now. Uh, but I'll do it tomorrow on the live so as many of you as possible can join in when we do. Now of course you know we can't leave here with the next tape just within reach. So we're going to sit down for it. H gets the safe open within a few tries and promptly puts in the tape. He's addressed directly for once, as are his community, the Dullards, as X puts it. Then, things take a turn. The audience keeps asking for more, and H wants to keep supplying, so he's instructed to go outside for tape number five, right then and there. What do I need? I need to calm down. Sorry, uh, I'm not really uh, following Shad here. Uh, I need to try to be kind of quiet. Because I don't want to wake up my neighbors. I'm fucking nervous. Fuck. Fuck me, dude. Is that not it? Is that not the exact fucking swing? No way, there's... It's he right here, that dog. No fucking way. It's like spiders and shit. But there's definitely that gray thing. If this is a trap... Yes, no. That I'm live still. I don't know if that does anything. Maybe should have brought a fucking knife, but... Let me put this. Wait. I thought he was fucking bullshitting me. Yeah, that's a tape. Fuck. And 
that's gray marker, right? I don't know, can you see that? That is by far the most fucked up thing yet. Holy shit. Did I close my fucking windows now? Yeah. It's closed. Probably just the light bulb. I haven't changed those in a while. Wait, what did I miss?
And that, right there, is why we see a story through when there's still hope! That is what I wanted! Yes! Oh boy. Talk about some payoff, right? The little hints here and there about H's overabundance of sleep, the odd messages in between the cryptic Game Master verbiage about telling H to stop while he's ahead, the tiny whispers of action on screen the audience asked about, suggesting maybe paranormal circumstances that H then disproved or waved off, and it all led to this. A small band of underlying touches that never covered up the main running action of the game narrative, working their way up to this moment. Bravo. And it was all done in a live stream. Sure, you can trick people with pre-recorded material, but still, that was a beautiful punch in the jaw that the work was laid out for in advance. You see, people often ask how to make horror and insane circumstances work better in terms of suspension of disbelief, and the way you do that is very simple. Create an atmosphere that is extremely easy to believe in the first place, getting them accustomed to the reality you've painted. Once that has been accepted, you let the monsters burst through the wall. In 10 tapes, the creator did exactly that. Remember the situation we found ourselves in? Our central character is just a guy playing an ARG. He's not a tormented soul. He's not bearing a family curse that's been held secret. His filmmaker friend from college didn't bash him over the head and leave him for a monster years ago that's been caught on tape. H is simply H at this moment. A guy, like everybody else, who wanted to show something interesting that happened on TikTok like so many people do. And as things went along, they played masterfully into the cliché, stereotypical ones and zeros nonsense we've seen way too many creators lean into since Marble Hornets. The setup is pretty simple. The person who occupied the apartment previously left an ARG for the next tenant, and while they're laughably far from being original about it, they're also concerningly invasive in how they're going about it. There is a sense of reality in it all, and while many of the classic ARG trappings are as groan-worthy as they are heartwarming in their adherence to paying tribute, they lend so much believability to the situation that is being presented. It's just a game. It's just someone who's way too into this playing Game Master, and we're all having some fun with it. And now? Now it is not a game. Delightfully, horrifically so. It just got paranormal, baby, and the creator of 10 tapes worked for that sucker punch. I'm not even going to say that Tape 5 saved the narrative, because the conducting of the narrative up to that point is what laid the work to make Tape 5's events so impactful. It was a risky move. I don't think it's hard to tell that 10 tapes almost lost me after Tape 3, and I know I must not be alone in that. But that dice roll landed in the creator's favor, big time. The saving grace of the narrative up to this point was the incredible utility in ARG game development and interaction that was original. Codes, vague messages, Mr. Spoopy Game Master bits, all of that is so old hat that it's been eaten by moths. But the tower! Absolutely stunning and inspired use of elements in your surroundings while keeping in mind a need to keep an audience interacting. And the live streams? The constant live streams? Including one in which two players were directly chosen to carry the story and not miss the mark on crucial steps? That takes good design, that takes trust, and it especially takes courage to execute. And of course, we've already touched upon an obvious factor for anyone studying or having played the experience. The codes and puzzles run deep, and you have to be so committed and intelligent in your crafting to pull it off. Ten Tapes has taken something run through and wary, spun it in a way with new perspective, and locked us in at an unexpected moment with a great surprise attack. I am genuinely excited to get to part two with you all. This just got so good.
That's all for now, everyone. 5 out of 10 is the perfect place to stop for a halfway mark. Thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Thanks to Jeff for creating 10 tapes. Thanks to the 10 tapes community for their efforts and record keeping. Thanks to all of you for watching. And thanks to my supporters on Patreon. If you'd like to support Nightmind, you can do so for as little as just $2 a month, which gets your name in the credits of all major videos and allows you into the Patreon community with our Discord. This also supports the Nightmind Index for new and emerging unfiction projects, where 10 tapes had a listing during its early days. And if you can't do Patreon, you might have noticed the new thanks button below my videos. You can donate a personal thanks to me directly this way, and your comment will show up with a special tag. So, if you enjoy what I do, or particularly enjoy this episode and want to say thanks that way, you can do so. Thanks for joining me in the talk again this evening. Once more, I'm Nick Nocturne, and I'll be seeing you again real soon for part two. Until next time, sleep tight.